there was one other possible thing I was thinking to add when we left off last time, which was this idea of maybe bringing out a map. The concept of a map. I've got a lot in here, though, and I think that's my biggest concern is that I've got so many little pieces. I've got the snake and the skull, and I've got the sword going behind, and I've got the gems and the, the, the gold coins piled up here. I threw in this rum bottle, which I think I may need to make the rum bottle a little more prevalent. I don't know. Rum bottles sometimes, especially the old world ones, were really not designed to be huge. Small enough to stash away. Um, so we'll have to see. But I was thinking about this concept of a map. I've got a little bit of some creepy crawly spider up here. And then I'm thinking a little bit about a map. Because what else goes with pirates, right? We've got the eye patch, the skull, the captain's hat, all of it. Maps are what lead to treasure, right? Or at least as we're, we think of them as, as buried treasure. But I suppose not all treasure that pirates did was buried treasure either. But that is sort of one of the great cliches um, is a map. Do I put a map? I don't know. Um, if I were to add a map, where would I add this map? Would it be the idea of maybe like, I was thinking maybe the map could be kind of curled up, tucked in behind here, kind of maybe the corner of it is sort of behind the sword. I don't know. We could, let's see if we could maybe do it in pencil first. It'll erase better in pencil, even though I've been using mostly the watercolor pencil. If I use graphite, it'll erase. So what if I did, what if I did a, a map over here and did kind of a, the idea that it's tucked tucked behind here just just the idea of something else not unraveled but maybe kind of a this document like rolled up back here giving the idea Something like that. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. I don't know. Maybe, maybe in the end I'll end up not keeping a lot of this and I'll just paint it out. I don't want to overcomplicate it. This is not something that necessarily people would look at very closely either. So it might be kind of there but not there. I don't know. Well, we can always paint it out later, but I've got things in place. So I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start to get some values on here. And then I can pick and choose what I want to bring forward and what I don't want to bring forward. One other thing I was thinking, too, if this is a sign that's hanging down, maybe I need some sort of sus suspended structure here, like um, a chain. do something like that
chains kind of I'm not using the watercolor pencil here because I'm thinking this might actually involve a little less color. Little chain link idea here. There we go. Anyway, I hope you're having a good week where you're at. Hope everything's good in your world, that you're getting a chance to make your passion. relevant in your world that you are able to um, make time for your passion I think it's important that we make time for our passions they kind of define who we are and if it's a big part of your life the way that it is for mine it's something that you just gotta do just gotta do it All right, there we go. I'm gonna overwork it there. I'll paint it out later, but the idea being that we're connected up above. All right. So I'm going to start in, um, I'm thinking about my colored pencils that I had. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit of gouache here. So I got my colored pencils I've been using for my line, but now I'm thinking a little bit about just coming in with a wash of color over the top. Now, I'm going to move in from the side here, try to get my palette a little bit closer so maybe you can see what I'm doing here. I don't know if you're going to be able to get it. Well, yeah. Hey, Jeshu, what's up, man? Welcome in. Thanks for joining. Art is going well. We're working on a little uh, tavern sign, some sort of signage or placard uh, with this kind of skull pirate theme shape going tonight. How about you? What's happening in your world? Thanks for joining. We're running the late show tonight. Boy, it was a good day, though, today. The family and I did a did a great hike. We did a hike along um, up in the sort of Lake Berryessa area. It's beautiful. The rain was starting to come a little bit, which made it all wet and clean and beautiful the way kind of being out in the rain is. It wasn't raining hard, but it it everything was it was like sort of when the light drizzle was happening. All right, so let's see. I'm mixing up some colors here. You're probably not going to be able to see all my mixing, and that's okay. Um, I've got one other palette I might bring in up top here. I don't know if you guys are seeing this. I guess you can see a little bit up here in the corner. I'm thinking, you know, I, I really want this nice bluish-green kind of aqua sea colors over the whole thing.
So I'm kind of coming in really light, but with a little bit of this yellow green cut into this turquoise, it gives it that nice. Let's try this. Now last week when we were talking about this, we were talking about this is, I'm doing this on a, <sighs> got a little bug up there. I'm doing this on a hot press. No, I'm sorry, cold press, but on a block. I'm working on a, um, a watercolor block, aquarelle. And this is roughly about nine by 12. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is stay very transparent here. And I'm just kind of putting a nice wash over everything. Just because I want the whole thing to feel like a sculpture and because it's a relief, and the only way to kind of make it all feel like it's made out of the same stuff is it at least has to have a wash over the top. All right, sounds good. Some YouTube recording, nice. What kind of stuff? On some design stuff you're working on? Sounds exciting, man. Is this a class you're running or a... Yeah, it has definitely been raining hard here in the last uh, last day or so. It's been off and on, though. It'll rain really hard for a while, and then it'll totally just go nothing and be totally clear. And then rain real hard again, and then clear again. We've seen this today about three or four times. It's kind of interesting. Last storm that came through here in California was just all at once for all day, all night, <laughs> and then that was it. But this has been weird. This has been really up and down. Yeah, this is getting a real nice seafoam color. I'm liking this. So I'm mixing a little bit of this kind of cobalt, actually more like cerulean blue, with a little bit of yellow-green. So it's mostly cerulean blue, but it's warming up with a little bit of that, that yellow-green in it giving it that kind of aqua colors of the ocean. Now I've also got some blue in the drawing that I did underneath and that's fine. Oh, I see. Cool. That sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to come back in over the top here. I don't want it to be too dark because I want to be able to go over the top, which I will. Now, if I were working purely transparently, I would have to really be careful about preserving the whites. But because I know that I'm going to come in with gouache, I have that flexibility to be able to go opaque. And so that's what I'm planning on. And the line work that's there is only going to help me 
Um, so I know where my form is, but I am pretty much figuring that the line itself will probably disappear mostly. I don't want it to read as graphic line. So this, this coloring that what I'm doing now is just unifying the whole thing to feel like it's aged bronze or, or something where it's gotten a lot of moisture, a lot of water on it, which turns it that kind of aqua. It's like um, copper can do that. Uh, certain metals, when they've been exposed to the air for a long time, turn that kind of aqua blue. That's what I'm aiming for. So I'm keeping it really wet. Oop, got a little bit of paint out here, which I'll have to clean up with some white later, but that's all right. So just doing a wash. You know, I could probably use a nice big flat brush for this, but this is pretty small for me. Most of the time when I work, you can't really tell here on screen, but most of the time when I work, I like to be somewhere, I don't know, 11 by 14, a little bit bigger. It gives me room to draw big if I want, detail if I want, but not enough that it gives away too much of the texture if I want something much cleaner. Got a lot of water here, so I gotta clean up my clean up my edges a little bit. All right, so I'm getting some nice seafoam sea foam colors, which again will hopefully read as kind of aged, weathered bronze or something. I'm getting some... Uh, Right. So we're almost got the whole thing covered here. There we go. I will definitely be adding layers of color over the top, but I'm just trying to get that nice turquoise aqua kind of green as a base. Just enough so I can see my lines coming through underneath. This is not going to be transparent in, in most of the places, so this will all... have degrees of thickness and opaque painting over the top. Some parts might be more transparent.
but this as a base will really help. Now looking back at the first part, which has now started to dry, that first half, I can see that it's a little more greenish, and I like the blue a little more, so I'm going to come back in with just a little more of the blue over here. I could begin to put some of the blue in the darker recesses. And I'm using gouache right now, even though I'm using it transparently, I can feel that it's a little bit thicker. So I'll be controlling mostly a monochromatic or duochromatic sense of light and shadow in the rendering to create what feels like something made out of all the same material but with varying degrees of relief I don't know what you guys are listening to tonight out there while you're watching. Maybe you got something TV on in the background or your own music. I'm doing the old school jams. R&B. Cruising classics. I felt in an old school nostalgic mood today. Something about that rain. So as I'm painting here, if I do want to go a little bit darker, what do I do to make my values darker? Well, you could use black, but to be honest, black is not a great option because black tends to desaturate things. So rather than black, we can also use darker um, valued colors or cooler colors for shadows. And then warmer, slightly warmer color, lighter value, warmer colors to make things come forward. So I've got the edge of my skull coming through here. So I'm using this darker turquoise blue to begin to separate light and dark. You can begin to see this happening already here. Now, here's the thing. This is gouache. And gouache is very sensitive to water. And it will stain, but it will come back up if you work it hard enough. If you mix it with a lot of water and scrub in, you can get it to lift back up. But layering is going to be tricky because unlike say things like acrylic which when you do a layer and it dries it stays not true in water soluble mediums so while i am spending a little bit of time layering in some darker values i know that they're going to be dark and i have to be aware that as i if i'm going to go lighter over the top it's going to have to be opaque but that opaqueness may still mix with what's underneath. So this is what makes gouache tricky. 
gouache is, tends to be very technique driven. You have to keep some, a few factors in mind as you're painting in order to not lose track of what you're doing. And I think a lot of people end up getting stuck because they treat it like a watercolor, which it is with a lot of water added. But as you build it up, it's even more sensitive to water than watercolor. Watercolor will stain to a certain degree. And, and the first preliminary layers, if you're getting dark enough, will stay down. They'll have some more permanency and, and staining to them. They'll come up too, but gouache is very sensitive this way. So you have to really plan how you're layering the colors. And layering your paints, I should say, more than your colors. Okay. So not only are you dealing with value, you are dealing with opacity. So what really becomes more important is where is the lights, where are the shadows, where are the lights, where are the shadows? That becomes the bigger, the bigger question. Where do you want this to catch light? And remembering that in this case, I want the whole thing to feel like it's made out of metal. Like this thing is sign is made out of some sort of sculpture. It's a sculpture. And maybe in bronze or something like that. So it's got to have relief to it so that the forms pop out. But it's a pseudo. It's not really a sculpture. It's a painting, so I have to get my limited colors working here. All right. It's looking pretty good. I like the blue. The blue's feeling right. So the question is, how much is going to come forward? How much is going to stay behind? I'm going to have my rum bottle probably come forward a little bit. Got my sword back there too. So I don't know if you can see, but this bottom edge here right in here this edge right here is actually facing upward so this part is actually three-dimensional this is going to be like a little lip so this should be kind of in highlight and these coins are actually going to parcel partially come over the lip so that actually will look three-dimensional almost like a like a pop-up book or something like these little structures are actually coming in front of the three-dimensional lip that's right behind it there. So that, that should be interesting. I'm going to do this little game where, because it's a relief, part of it looks flat, but then part of it looks dimensional. So it's going to be kind of interesting. We'll have to figure out how this works as I go along the way. Chat is open. If you want to jump in, say hello. Love to meet my friends out there. Hope you're all having a 
a good one. Had yourselves a good weekend, good week. Maybe you're getting ready for the week ahead. Now the skull, I definitely want to come forward. So I'm going to come a little darker back in here so that it comes forward. And then I have my kind of jewels and gems down here, pirate treasure. So those need to come out a little bit more. Just using monochromatic at this point. I might begin to introduce warmer and cooler versions of this to add to the dimensional qualities. I could use complementary colors in the shadows to kind of push back. Um, but right now I'm staying mostly monochromatic with the staying in the blue, blue green. Not going to go super long this week. I'm going to just get in this little step here. I'm going to begin to put in a little bit of dimension to this hat. Soften that edge. So the hat's going to have a little little warbling to it, a little dimension to it, as we can see right down in there. Now the nose is definitely sunken in. Those nasal passages are going to drop back quite a bit. The other thing to keep in mind is uh, watercolors, transparent mediums, especially watercolor and gouache, some can sometimes dry a lot lighter than they look when they are wet. So you may have to oversaturate sometimes to really get the, the richness that you're looking for. The edge of my skull is definitely going back in shadow. I'm, I'm thinking that the light is going to be coming from above, maybe? Like, kind of down on the face? Or maybe it would be better to have it kind of illuminated from below. Maybe that would be better. Maybe more of the warm light is coming from underneath. might be more haunting that way. Definitely be a little bit more sinister looking, I would think. That might be cool. Maybe though, maybe there's more of a warm light coming from down here. More of this hat would drop into 
I like that. You know, it's already starting to look a little bit like it's got light coming from below. That might be cooler. Maybe that would be better. I was thinking light from above would be on the sign, but maybe they'd have lights from below. That might be cool. May have discovered a... Ideas sometimes get better along the way. I think that's the idea is that as we work them, you know, we work a little bit, work a little bit more, and they get, get more interesting. Interesting things start to happen. It's got a little bit of this kind of like bandana here. This would be sort of the shadow of the bottle. Maybe the lip of the sign would be better to have light coming from below on the sign. Again, I'm just trying to create the beginnings of a little bit of contrast to make the forms start to pop out a little bit. So watercolor blocks, in this case, aquarel paper, is almost 100% rag, meaning it's almost 100% pure cotton. So sometimes as you're painting, the cotton fibers loosen up a little bit and you get these little hairs. By the way, brush here, I'm using a Winsor Newton Series 7. Okay, pretty top notch. I don't always paint with such a nice brush, but I needed to get into some detail and I needed some control. 
and the Windsor Newton Series 7 is probably the best go-to brush that is out there for control. Very expensive though, so not always... the most affordable brush to go to. Yeah, I don't I definitely am not a believer that your brushes always have to be the best. I don't think they always do, depending on what you're painting. If you need a lot of control, then well, sometimes you gotta have a brush that gives you that kind of control, but sometimes some painting that we do can actually invite the use of old brushes for textures and scumbling and creating kind of really interesting things with some old beat up brushes. But given how tight everything is inside this picture here, I am definitely needing a bit more control to get into the tight spots and controlling very carefully how much moisture I have on the surface. I needed a brush with that kind of command of control of the water. So I've got these little little leaves, kind of tropical leaves I'm thinking in here. Figuring pirates were also on land at times, especially in search of treasure and things like that. So I figure that some of this, I wanted to give some feeling of not just water, but also the green of land and tropical places and forests, rainforests maybe. Some beautiful exotic places. Okay, so I got a sword back there. Then I've got a snake right in front here. But I want my rum bottle to definitely be in front of the snake. So you can see where some of my line is coming through. I'm going to have to paint thickly over the top of that. So if light's kind of coming from below, it's probably going to catch a lot of those. And here's the thing I'm thinking as I'm painting this. OK, 
case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> um, a lot of this is gonna get is gonna disappear into the swirl of of the sculpture. So last time I was talking about um, the gates of hell. Um, and how it's really an abstract sculpture. You begin to recognize things that pop out in the sculpture the more you look at it, but really it's, it's a relief. Of a bunch of background and then these forms kind of emerging out of the soup. And that's kind of what I want this to be. If this is all kind of soupy here in the background, that these forms, the edge of the map, will start to come out. But that'll make it more interesting to look at. Like the more you go back and look at it, the more you will see there's all these different elements in here that you didn't notice maybe the first time. Alright, looking pretty good. Got to give some dimension, I think, to my snake out here, which is kind of altering the shape of the, the squareness of the sign. So I got to get some shadows out here. All right, pretty good. this a little bit. It's going to be a game of softening certain edges, but it's it's already starting to look pretty solid, starting to get some dimension to it. I really like the way that the idea that the light is shining from below. So if the light is coming from below, then my inside lip of this thing is going to be, at least on the bottom edge, is going to need to be the darker. Chat's open for a few more minutes here. It's going to be a short one, I think, this time. I'm trying to make the streams a little bit on the shorter side and um but maybe more frequently. More frequent but shorter in duration. Things are getting pretty busy, so I have a little bit less time. But I'd like to get in more frequently for sure.
a little bit of a leaf coming here in the background. Sort of a leaf there and a leaf there. See that nice tip there? I've had this water brush, watercolor brush for a long time. And by the way, you can use watercolor brushes with your gouache, but you do want to clean them really well afterwards. But they, you take you take good care of your brushes. They can last a long time. I've had this one for a long time. Still has a beautiful point on there. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. That's what you pay for. That is what you pay for right there. I've had this for probably five years, but I've always taken really good care of it. And it's holding a beautiful point. Cheap brushes will begin to lose their tip. They won't hold the tip at all. But if you're using water, solu water soluble medium, meaning watercolor or gouache, and you clean it really well, it will last a long time. All right. I think the question here is, do I... Do I let the chains be the same as this, this, this sculpture? Are the chains sculpted too, the same material? Or do I make them a different color so that this, this material stands out more or separates itself a little bit? I'm thinking if it were two different colors, then you would know that this is, that would indicate to you that this is actually made out of some sort of bronze, aged bronze. All right, I got my spider over there, my spider. Maybe I could um, give a little bit of form to this guy too. Let's get some shadows on there. All right, well, this has been a pretty good, pretty good start here. I think I'm going to let this, this dry really good this week. Or until I can stream next time, let this dry really good. This will be a good base to work off of. I 
have a little bit of paper towel here, which I think there might be a few places I want to lift. I don't really need to lift because I'm going to paint opaquely later, but I think just to help me see it a little bit better. So I'm taking a little bit of water and I'm going to get a few things wet that I know need to be lighter. Soak it really good. And then got to get it really dry. And then you can lift it a little bit. Not too much. You can also scrub a little bit, not with a round. You probably want to scrub with a flat, maybe a filbert or, or just taking some of the paint off of there. What's interesting, um, I'm not getting a lot off. I think I, I, you know, I'm using good quality paint, a lot of permanents here, so I'm... Higher pigmentation, better quality paints will stain definitely more. few pocket areas. I need to be a little bit darker. All right. All right. Once I now have this base nice and dry, I can then feel a little more about controlling those shapes a little bit more. the map back there. Any other little areas that I can darken in? There's a good one right in there. So I got the bandana kind of coming down. The coins. It's part of my gems over here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't know if I can get any of this to come back up. Oh, yeah, it's coming up a little bit. bit on that earring, that pirate earring, or we were talking about last time that it's the zygomatic arch ring, seeing as how he doesn't have ears now. It's a little bit darker.
Nice. Do 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 do. I'm definitely got the old school jams going here. All right. Well, you know what? Um, yeah, I think this is it for tonight. It's about I got all in me this round. Start working on the more of the textures, little things next time. But I want to let this wash dry to pull it all together. And it will probably lighten a little as well, which is OK. But when it lightens, it will allow me to see a little bit more of my drawing probably some of that wood Gonna get a little bit to this snake. So the light's gonna be coming from below, which means part of the neck's gonna be in shadow. Maybe make it pop off there a little bit. Transition my map. All right. A little soft. Soften these edges just a little bit. Put a little water on there. Soften it up. Loosen it up. Again, I plan to go opaque. So if I have to, if there's any edges there, I can always paint them out or paint over the top. And we figured out this time that it will be the light. It will be illuminated from below, as all good pirate pirates should be. That's their best angle is from below. Looking up. All right. I think that's going to do it, folks.